training and other assistance. In its report today, the Urban League says the national recession is having a devastating effect on black Americans. Local programs are feeling the crunch. State funding for job training isn't as available. Private funding is not as available. I mean, we have an employment resource center here. We have a location. We have, uh, you know, the opportunity to, to do a range of things for the African-American community. Funding activities like that through staff and through programs is extremely difficult. You can't deliver the services if you don't have the people and the resources to do so. The National Urban League has proposed a so-called Marshall Plan aimed at strengthening the nation's infrastructure by investing in job training and education. That's what a new Philadelphia study found out. That survey released today interviewed 700 black teens from various cities about just who is most influential in their lives. It concluded, though, that black teens reject mainstream black culture as thoroughly as they reject white culture. New England Cable News reporter Suzanne Malvo says a controversial study has Boston youth workers up in arms. <laughs> Adolescence is hard enough without AIDS, crack, and drive-by shootings. But today's inner city blacks have to deal with it all. And in Dorchester, Massachusetts, for Grover Cleveland middle schoolers, it's not that easy. So how do they deal with the pressure? And who teaches them the lessons about safe sex, drugs, and gangs? An independent study released from Philadelphia says most black preteens don't learn these lessons from black athletes, politicians, or television stars. Leaders like Jesse Jackson and Magic Johnson are only figureheads to most urban teens. And 14-year-old Gennaro Salcedo of Dorchester agrees. You have like Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson coming out, talk about AIDS and drugs, but um, you don't see too many of them coming down here at Dorchester or Roxbury. But the two-year-old study goes even further. It says that not only are traditional black leaders ineffective in reaching urban teens, it suggests that hardly anyone today can get through to black youngsters. The researchers Ivan Guzag and May Productions, a black-owned market research company, say when it comes to teaching 9- to 14-year-olds about safe sex and other issues, an effective strategy for reaching this audience with these messages simply doesn't exist yet. This conclusion has enraged many of Boston's black community youth workers and teens. Youth worker Susan Wilcox says the study is insulting. We always want to find some sort of formula for how we can reach kids. If we could just sort of package it, then you know, we'd be able to reach you know, these kids and everything would be okay. But I think that what is really important in terms of reaching kids is being honest with them. Um, and also uh, telling them or teaching them or enlightening about issues that are really relevant to their lives. The study called Reaching the Hip Hop Generation says that there's no effective means to get through to young black teens. We'll tell that to these kids who say that they look up to the adults in their community who care about them. My mother, because um, she tells me, like, if I'm doing something wrong, she'll tell me, she'll tell me not to do it, and she tells me um, where to go, what things to do, stuff that's good for me. I respect my older brother, my older, older brother, too, who's 25. You know, he's he he's been there for me. Once I needed something, he's trying to he's trying to put be there as in a way of a father figure, where my mother, you know, things that my mother can't talk to me about. My sister. Why? Because she knows what I feel. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a gun or a knife. The best thing to do is to walk away. It's people in the community who make a difference, says Harold Sparrow of Boston's Urban League. He's director of the Positive Futures Program, a program which provides support for what he calls at-risk young men living in female-headed households. Sparrow says that the study is unfounded. Sincerity reaches young black men today. In our society, too many people are concerned only with themselves and what they can attain. When young black men see that there's somebody out there that cares for them and is willing to put in the time and the patience, they come through. The Positive Futures Program is just one way young men are reached. Another is through the music of young hip-hop culture, rap. Wilcox conducted a study of rap music's impact on teens and found that youngsters are empowered by their music. Some of it is enjoyed for its content and some of it just for the beat. But I think if you really look at the lyrics that are there, it really reflects what's going on in society. Mm -hmm. It's brutally honest. I mean, it talks about police brutality and racism and uh, 
uh, poverty and other sort of inequities. Um, and on the other hand, it also talks about their culture. Particularly. Youth leaders agree that the culture of African Americans is rich and diverse, as are the young. There's no one method of getting through to the kids. That I don't think that you need to see a whole bunch of teachers wrapping the lessons. But I think you do need to see teachers who are or parents or community leaders who are generally interested in kids, who are going to listen to what it is that they have to say, and, and to have some expectations about what they want from them. You know, if you just like sit a person down and like talk to them like one on one and you know just be straight with them, I think they'll understand. The Philadelphia study hopes to use its findings to develop its own educational campaigns to better understand black teens. Suzanne Malvo, New England Cable News, Dorchester. Growing rage on the city streets. Among them, Reverend Eugene Rivers, the man on the move who knows how to move the city's young. He grew up on the streets of Philadelphia, but ended up at Harvard University. Three years ago, Rivers redirected the focus of his church from the pulpit to the street. Byron Pitts has his story from the night file. Okay, I get what you mean. You, so you, you straight on your gig thing. You straight on what you're going to be doing. We sit down. We talk about where you want to go to school. Let me begin to hook it up, man. I mean, that's he is a Pentecostal preacher with a plan. I'm a street preacher because Jesus was a street preacher. I mean, this business of the mainline church versus the street preacher, Jesus was the street preacher of all street preachers. Reverend Eugene Rivers spends more time in Dorchester District Court meeting with probation officers than he does with his congregation. Pastor of the Azusa Christian community, Reverend Rivers blames the plight of urban America on its most sacred institution. The black church has failed. Because if the black church had done the outreach that it should have done, many of these young parents of these young people would be in church. If the black church had done its job, right, there wouldn't be so much criminality because the churches would be on the street. If the black church had done its job, many of these young brothers, yo, what's up? What's going on, yo? Many of these young brothers would not be on the street now. Reverend Rivers points to the melee in Morningstar Baptist Church in Mattapan two weeks ago. 14 thugs wearing black hoods stormed in. Shots were fired. One man was nearly stabbed to death. Those young brothers bum-rushed the church because they, in some sense, did not feel that the black church represented an institution that deserved to be respected. And we cannot get around that. The black church failed to take it to the street, so the street brought it to the black church in their face. Reverend Rivers' ministry encompasses a 26-square-block section of North Dorchester. He has provided help and hope and jobs. Last summer, he helped dozens of Boston gang members and gang wannabes find work. Al Shaw has employed a number of Reverend Rivers' kids at his small software computer company in Dorchester. Working on his Ph.D. in computer science at MIT, Shaw says the Reverend's approach is working. You know, I have computers in a church basement where they're writing up all of their, you know, the specifications and whatnot. They're learning how to write, do business cards and things like that. Former gang members. Former gang members. Thugs, if you will. Even some of them are still gang members, right? The kids behind us uh, need some strong male leadership. If you'll note, behind us, do you see any adults there? Those kids are there by themselves. That's the problem. The fact that the kids are on the corner isn't necessarily bad if they're being supervised. But those kids are, like too many other kids, unsupervised, and there are three churches on the corners. Here again, my point is made. There go those young boys on that corner, and there are about five churches, you know, in, in two blocks. Those churches aren't open, their resources aren't available, consequently the kids are on the corner. I rest my case. He has bailed some out of jail, found others jobs, grabbed more than a few by the collar. Every man, he says, has a responsibility to do something. In Dorchester, Byron Pitts, News Center 5, tonight. Coming up in sports.